Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about the top 10 most common faults on the Corsa E. This is years 2014 to 2019, the last shape that Vauxhall did before Peugeot, PSA or Stellians, whatever you're supposed to call them nowadays, uh, took over and ruined everything and that's for another video. So no particular rudder, let's get into it. Number one, everyone knows this one, coil pack. So what you'll find with the car is you'll generally find that when the car is cold or when the weather drops colder in the winter, you'll start the car and either the car will be slow to start um, or it will start up and the car will misfire quite badly. You'll have the engine management light flash a few times and when scanning the vehicle's ECU, uh, usually you'll see fault code P0300, which is either cylinder three misfire or multiple random misfire. This is usually, uh, not always, but almost certainly the coil pack. Coil packs aren't great on these cars as it is, but this is uh, made worse by the fact that people tend to neglect the servicing and don't have the spark plugs replaced. Coil packs, easy repair to do, it takes five minutes, you have two T30 torques um, and it just pulls out once you've taken the spark plug cover off and uh, put another one in, reset the code, Bob's your uncle. So that's the first one. Number two, wiper motor and linkage. So what you may find with this is that the wipers either don't return to the park position, so when you switch the ignition off, the wipers don't drop back down to the bottom. Uh, they act like uh, old cars did back in the days where they just stop wherever you switch the ignition off. Or you may find that they're hitting the side of the windscreen pillar. You can try unbolting the wiper arms and adjusting them, but I think you'll find that it still does it and there's a lot of play in the arms. So you either get a motor failure uh, electronically with the park switch inside the motor, or you get the actual linkages or the arms, sorry that fail themselves. Again, very easy job to do. The part isn't the cheapest part in the world, but it's a simple case of just removing the wiper arms, taking the scuttle panel off, a couple of bolts for the motor, unplug the motor, plug, uh, unbolt the linkage, bang a new one in. Nice and easy peasy. Number three, page valve. So what you'll generally get with this is you'll get a fault code or something on the lines of P0171, P0441 or P0446 off the top of my head. Some sort of lean code anyway. Basically, when this fails, you get a vacuum leak. So you're getting air or fumes from the fuel tank that's going into the engine that wasn't measured by the airflow meter, creating a vacuum leak. This is a dead easy part to replace. I think the part's around 18 pounds for a genuine part. It's a two minute job, pops on. Nice and easy, easy fix, easy to do. Number four, clutch problems. Now, as with any uh, car, you know, cheaper car, Fiesta Corsa, they're always common for clutches failing. I'm not sure if this is just mainly because they tend to be younger drivers that are a little bit inexperienced or older drivers that want to cheat run around and tend to ride the clutch a lot, but the Corsa E does seem to be quite common for clutch problems. It's quite a big job, a clutch, but in terms of cars, it's not a, a terrible job. They can be done by just dropping the subframe to one side and pulling the gearbox off, but it's still, still quite an expensive repair, unfortunately, to some people, but clutches are common in these, unfortunately, so they tend to burn out. Number five, USB sockets fails. So what, what when you have your iPhone or you know your phone plugged into the USB socket, what you generally find is that you'll go around the corner and the USB will just disconnect and IntelliLink will, will disconnect and put you back onto your radio. This isn't always the USB socket. This can quite often be iPhones are quite common for doing this. The plug wears away and it disconnects but quite often this is the USB socket. Nice easy job to do, the part isn't the cheapest. Off the top of my head I think the part's around £90 for a genuine new part, obviously you can't get an aftermarket part or anything like that, but yeah that is a common thing unfortunately and uh, the Corsa E only comes with one USB socket in the front so unless you retrofit some aftermarket ones, which I will do a video at some point on, if you get that problem you're probably going to want to sort that out. Number six, uh, no surprise here, timing chains. Yes, unfortunately these cars are still suffering from timing chain failure. Sometimes the chains stretch but usually it's the tension and that wears and then what happens is you get slack in the chain and as the timing chain runs round, the top of the chain slaps against the upper timing guide. So the, the rattling that you're hearing is the, yes, the chain slapping against the plastic on the upper guide and the engine will sound like, like a tractor. It is an expensive repair because there is a fair bit to do but in terms of cars they're not the end of the world, you know, from, from a, for a decent mechanic they're quite easy to do to be fair. So that's another thing unfortunately, timing chains still go in these engines after all these years. Number seven, crankcase breather. So this is similar to the purge valve we discussed, you get a vacuum leak. On the rocker cover you have a little, it looks like a little tiny disc uh, and that's a little breather and they tend to fail and you can hear air leaking out of them. That will usually flag again the P0171 or some other kind of lean code. Unfortunately with this it's a new rocker cover required as it comes as part of the rocker cover. I would say on this one as a tip not to fit aftermarket rocker covers because they're not great, they leak, they don't work properly. Off the top of my head I think it is around £200 for a new rocker cover but thankfully the 
repair is very easy and straightforward to do so there shouldn't be much labour in there. Number seven, the speedo goes blank. So what will happen is when you're driving down the road and you have the little digital uh, speedometer in the middle of the cluster that reads your speed of the vehicle digitally. What will happen is usually when you come into a speed camera because it's so slow, the every six, seven seconds the speedo will just randomly go blank and then come back on. And it'll just keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that. Now, thankfully this is not a uh, a light sensor failure usually within the IPC. This is usually a software fault and there is a software update available for this which fixes this issue. So nice and easy on that one. I don't know what Vauxhall charge for software updates or what your dealer will charge for a software update uh, but if the vehicle is still in its manufacturer's warranty which uh, most of these won't be now unfortunately then that would be something or is usually something that's covered. Number eight, nice and simple, condensation in the rear light. So the seals fail, you get moisture in there, it fogs up. Strangely, it seems to be the offside rear, the driver's one, that seems to be the worst. I don't know why that is, but uh, you do get condensation in the lights, something minor, a lot of modern cars do nowadays, not really sure why, but you know, they just do. Number nine's a little bit of an odd one. The uh, tire pressure monitoring sensor, or the TPMS system, uh, will randomly come on and it says something like service tyre monitor system when you go to read the tyre values or the tyre load it will read something like unknown or cannot read I'll put a picture up on the screen this is uh, as far as I'm aware a bug in the system usually if you reset the code that's it doesn't happen again or it doesn't happen again for a few years if it comes back on the, the next step is to uh, recalibrate all the TPMS sensors or carry out a what's called a, a relearn procedure you can do this by obviously taking your car to a dealer or a garage or this is very easy to do by using a tool and the tool is a EL, so Echo Lima-50448. You can get a copy version of this tool on eBay for around £10. So I'm not saying I endorse copy tools at all, but there you go. There is a cheap tool on eBay which works absolutely perfectly. If you're interested, I'll do a video on that one as well to show you how that actually works. So that's my top 10 most common faults that at least I see on these cars from owning them and working on them. If you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. If there's any of this that you think your vehicle may be struggling with and you need a little bit of guidance or help on actually fit doing the fix, leave me a comment below and I'll try and do a video to show you how to do the actual fix. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.